So what I want from a, from a, from a user interface um, library is um, composability. So for example, if I remove the graph widget or the graph element from my uh, interface, the system should still work. So if I click drink, then the counter should update, right? I said right. So this is what I call composability, and this is what I call water. Do you know that feeling after drinking uh, when your mouth is like very dry and you're feeling a little bit tired? And it's, all, it's, it's a lot of work to keep the microphone up here. <laughs> okay, the next feature I want be not beside composability is reusability. So, sorry? People interrupting my talk, what's going on here? So reusability is like the concept I take an element of my user interface and put it in some different controller or some different view and it still works the same way. So this is, for example, if I, if I would view my profile on Drink and Track, there's a nice picture of me drinking. Can you really understand me? Because I hear uh, like an echo. It's okay, okay. And I'm not sure if I'm uh, sober enough. So I take, the, I take the, um, the blood alcohol counter, the widget, and put it in a, in, different, in a different controller and it still works the same way as it did before. And uh, the next feature I want to have in a widget library or in a, in a um, user interface uh, library is uh, that I have AJAX updates. So I want my um, user interface to update dynamically and I don't want to update the entire page every time the user clicks on drink. I want to have um, partial updates. This is a crucial point in, in a Podomon. This is, so in Rails, uh, in Rails we don't have a very nice way for that, and this is why I started uh, writing a Podomo. So the the crucial thing about a Podomo is uh, that I introduce a concept called widgets or portlets or view components or whatever you like into Rails. Who has heard of widgets before? Is it a familiar word for you? Or okay, because a view, uh, sorry, a widget is just a a view component, an element in your user interface, like a button or um, a graph showing my blood alcohol concentration. It's a long word. Yeah, and uh, a widget, f uh, looked it up in the Nick Sutterer's uh, computer science uh, encyclopedia. A widget is a view element in a graphical user interface, and its features are composability, interactivity, and reusability. We also call it a view chunk, since it's, it's a part in my page. And uh, this is um, problematic in Rails. So Rails um, is, a, is an MVC framework, right? It's a, a good model layer. It's um, some big front controller intercepting requests, processing all everything that's going on on the page, and it's um, a template engine. Wow, that's great. The real MVC works like the following. We have a controller, a model, and a view. The model is not, uh, is not, is not, is not an active record instance. It can be anything, like an instance. And usually the model will tell the controller if it updates and the controller will tell the model to update some value. For example, when we uh, update some attribute. And the view will also tell the controller about um, user gestures when the user clicks on the drink. And the controller will, uh, will um, process this uh, gesture and update the view. So this is MVC from the book. It's cool, it's a uh, design pattern. I like design patterns. So in, in Rails, this works like uh, we have one big con controller. It's called controller, but it's not a controller in MVC. It's a front controller pattern. People confuse that in Rails. Then we have partials, which are the views. And um, so when I click on the drink button in my app, drink and track application, the controller will um, process this click and will update the view using a, by rendering a partial. And it will um, like um, put, put different different updates on the page. So I did some small example. I click on drink. Then there is a small controller uh, action, which is like adding the drink to, to, to me, because I drank something. And then it's calling render. And render itself has to use um, render partial in order to update the counter. Oh, sorry, I was about to pose, like. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the controller is calling, uh, the view is calling render partial. And it's calling render partial several times. So it's, it's not very good readable, sorry for that. It's calling render partial several times in order to update the counter, the blood alcohol counter, and the graph on the left side. 
You can't use render multiple times in the controller action itself because there is a double render error. I hate that error, and uh, that's why I built a portable and cells. So in, in, in Rails 3. Point, uh, oh, there is a new approach. Or people start using um, Sprout Core or Backbone JS or something in order to uh, write the entire view, the entire user interface in, um, in the client. It's, uh, I like this approach. So you don't do anything view related in Rails anymore because the view layer in Rails is shit without a Podomo, of course. And you, you do your user interface in, uh, in the client. So everything from the clicking till the processing of the event is handled in JavaScript. So when I click on drink, Sprout Core or Backbone JS, is anybody using that kind of stuff, like this approach? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So I'm not very um, familiar with Sprout Core or Backbone JS. That's why I just have one slide about it. So I click on drink, and if I had a view interface, a user interface written in Sprout Core, Sprout Core will handle all this. What's going on here? Uh, Sprout Core will handle the, the click. It will see, OK, he wants to add some drink to, to, to his um, blood alcohol concentration, and then he does all this. It, uh, Sprout Core does all the stuff in order to update the screen, and uh, it just uses Rails as a backend, and it gets data from the Rails backend using REST. So this is uh, some new approach in um, in uh, Rails 3.0. The problem here is that everything is from the user interface is done in JavaScript. I'm not sure. I how do you like JavaScript? I mean, it's a great language, but I I like Ruby. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> I couldn't prepare my talk yesterday, uh, so I couldn't train it. So I, not, right now, I don't know about the following slides. <laughs> yeah, I, had, I had to get drunk. Sorry, I have to respect local traditions. <laughs> so when I when I click on drink, uh, when I click on on the drink button in drink and track, uh, the the um, the Sprout Core controller will uh, process this event and it will call uh, something something in the Rails backend in order to add a drink to my list. And it will get some, some, some new blood alcohol concentration value from Rails back. And then it will update the screen. And it all happens in JavaScript. <coughs> and in, um, in Apodomo, in, uh, the approach is a little bit different. So I am usually, um, Apodomo is a Rails gem. So it's running inside a Rails application. So I do my, my user interface. I do a lot of stuff in my, of my user interface in Rails and in Ruby. This is why uh, there are two gray circles. And they are both yeah, gray. And this means they're both running in Ruby. And Apodomo is still using JavaScript and Sprout Core and Backbone.js, whatever you like, to update the screen and to do, to do stuff in, uh, to, to get user gestures. But it's, um, the most part of the user interface is done in Ruby. So when I click Drink, the event of clicking is reported to Apodomo. And a Podomo can handle that event in Ruby. The, the approach I like even more is having two separate applications, which is a quite new approach. Like you have a Rails backend, and then you have another Rails application providing the front end. So, uh, the, so the Podomo front end is running in a, in a um, separate process and on a separate server, on maybe somewhere in India, and the Rails backend might be in uh, Germany. So when I click. The uh, drink event is reported to my Rails application running the Apodomo frontend in India. And uh, the frontend in India might uh, get data and store data and update data in uh, the Rails backend in Germany using REST or some other protocol. I just use REST here in order to make you a little bit more uh, eager to hear. So who's using REST? Real REST or Rails REST? Because <laughs> I gave a lot of talks about, uh, Rails, uh, about Rails REST and real REST. I can switch the talk if you like. If you want to hear about hypermedia, I'm free, <laughs> free to do that. So the, the, the question here is, um, I have JavaScript, I have Ruby, and I have Rails. So why should I have two different, or sh why should I put my user interface into um, a separate Ruby application? Why should I use a Podomo? And uh, the reason is, well, I can use Ruby in order to make a, to to um, create and update my user interface. So I like Ruby, and uh, this is um, why I created the Podomo. And I will jump into code now just to show you how you can use Ruby in order to uh, create user interfaces. So the Podomo approach is MVC again, but it's in Ruby. And we can still use REST 
to get data from the back end in Ruby. Ruby can do REST, did you know that? Oops, sorry. So in my, in, in my um, example, I will, I will implement drink and track with you guys now, the user interface. And I'm going to do that with a Rails, back, uh, with, with a Rails application containing the Apotomo front end. And we're using jQuery as a JavaScript library in order to, uh, do, to intercept user gestures in the browser. So the first step is um, to use the gem Apotomo. It's a gem, cool. Um, and the first, the first example I want to do is um, how, did I, how did I write the boring uh, drink list? So you remember there's a wine glass and a drink button and if I click on, click on the drink button then my blood alcohol will rise, which will happen tonight again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so Apotomo comes with a generator and Apotomo is about widgets. So there is a generator called widget generator. So what I do is I call Rails generator widget, and then I pass in the widget name, which is called drinks. So I want to create the drinks widget. And I also pass in some action. We call it a state in Apotomo. So it's, we'll see what states are about in a minute. So what I get is a class, a view, and a test, stopped out by the Apotomo widget generator. Isn't that great? Yeah. Hey, I managed to write a Rails generator. Come on. <laughs> OK, so let's have a look at the code. I, I like giving abstract talks about concepts, but I have to dive into code now. I'm sorry about that. Can you read it? I like. So what I really like about this place is this spot here. It's blinding me, so I can't see anything in the, in the audience. It's awesome. It's like a rock show. <laughs> All right, so we got, a, we, got a, we got the drinks widget here. It's derived from, um, from the Apotomo widget class. Hey, I still remember my slides, cool. And then we got the display state. This is like an action in a, in a Rails controller, but please do not confuse widgets and controllers in Rails. And uh, in, my, in my display state, I just call it display because it's rendering something. I, use the drink model and retrieve all the drinks that are available to, to, yeah, to drink. I put it in an instance variable and I can use render like in a controller to render the view. The view is in app widgets drinks display .html.haml. I'm using Haml because I like Haml more than ERB. It's, you can also use ERB or Slim or whatever you like. Oh my god, I have to drink so many water. It's, Okay, so in, in the view is, is very similar to, to the controller action. It's like uh, I use the method widget diff. It's a, it's a helper in Apotomo to, to generate a, a diff. Um, I will come to that later. And then I iterate over the drinks, which I just assigned. And then I stub out a listed item. And um, yeah, I, use, I can use uh, like the image function to, to create an image tag, so just to display the wine glass or the beer glass. And then I use link to. And then I use link to to, um, to create the button. In the button, I already use remote uh, hash rocket. Is it called hash rocket, that thing, the, the, the arrow? It is, OK. So I remote hash rocket through to make it an, an Ajax, um, a re, a Ajax um, link. And um, yeah, that's the view for now. It's, it's, not, it's not working. Do you, do you have a question, or is it just uh, stretching? I like stretching. It's good. It's good for you. So in, in, my, in my controller, so you, you remember the drink and track dashboard. You had the graph, you had the counter, and you had the drinks list. And uh, I call this the, 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 the home view, the, the, the dashboard. And it's, uh, naturally, it's provided by the home controller. It's a Rails controller. So this should look a little bit familiar to you. And the controller has its uh, index action like rendering the, the, the dashboard, and it has something new. It's called the has widgets method, which is awesome because it's by Apotomo. <laughs> the has widget method just um, um, lets, lets you um, define your widget tree you're using in your controller. So in, in my case, I just add the drinks widget I just created with the generator. I just add it to the root widget. The root widget is simply there, okay? so. No questions about that. Thank you. And uh, yes, I added. 
And then in the controller view, in the index view, I just use the new method render widget to render my drinks widget, which will put the drinks list on my dashboard. Hey, that's great! Thank you. Wonderful audience. 300 people. <laughs> Who's going to the after party tonight? Don't be shy. <laughs> I want to drink vodka with every one of you. <laughs> maybe not uh, sequentially, but maybe <laughs> parallel. So I just rendered a widget, and of course this is boring. I mean, you can do this with, with partials and uh, using uh, several approaches. So what I want is um, interactivity. I want to um, see something happening when I click on drink, on the drink button. So what I do in my, in my, in my widget, I'm, I'm back in the widget now, not in the controller, in the widget. And in, what I do in my widget view is um, I change the link to call a little bit. So I don't use a, a Rails helper to create a URL because it doesn't make any sense. I use the apotomo helper method. By the way, I hate helpers. Did I tell you about that? <laughs> um, I use the apotomo method URL for event. And um, this method is nothing special. It's no magic. It's just creating, um, uh, it just tells Apotomo to create a, a route. And if I follow that route, an event in Apotomo will be triggered. I, I, I use, um, it has a signature. Uh, the first argument is the, the event name. So I want to trigger a drink event since I click on drink. And then I want to attach some information to the event. So this is a very crucial part about um, Apotomo. So I, I want to trigger a drink event, and I want to tell the event about the drink that I clicked. So if I click the wine, then the ID in the event will be like five. And if I click the beer, then the ID in the event might be nine or eight. So um, when I click, Sven, where are you? <laughs> he's not here. He's, he's in, in every talk I give, there is at least one slide with Sven Fuchs. And now, what, what happens when I click the button now? So you remember I used URL for event. When I click the button now, JavaScript will issue an Ajax request to a new route. And this route will trigger an <laughs> Apotomo event. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting, there is an, an event triggered in Ruby now, a, drinks, a drink event. So we should handle that event. We should intercept that in our widget. And this happens by um, using, so I'm back in the widget code, in the drinks widget. This happens by using uh, the method response to event. So I tell my widget, my drinks widget, if you see a drink event, call your drink method and process this event. And this is all I need to do in order to, to get the, the click event from the front end into Ruby. So as soon as I respond to an event, the, the widget state, the drink method will be called automatically as soon as I click, um, as I, as, as soon as I click the button. And what I do in my, um, and what I do in my, in my state is, um, I, first of all, I get the event object, the, the event instance, as the first argument. This is what we call state args. So I can access. Uh, I can access that data attached to the event, data I attached in the front end in JavaScript, using the um, hash access. So I can get the drink ID from the front end using event bracket ID, closing bracket. Otherwise, you get a syntax error. And what I do in my in my um, in my state is I add the drink to my current user, which is uh, me in the example. So I process the incoming event, and then I render nothing because um, the the drinks list sh shouldn't be updated. I just wanna I just wanna add the drink to my drinks list. I could also use um, rest or whatever you want in my uh, in my state to to save the new drink in my list. It's up to you. So what happens here is the following. I, I, was, uh, I planned to do a list, and then when I click next, the next item will come, and the next item, and the next item. But I don't know how to do that in OpenOffice. Can somebody help me maybe after the talk? Who's using OpenOffice? <laughs> Quite a lot. So 
you, you should know how to do that because I don't know it. So what happens here is um, I render the widget in the page. I click on the drink button. This will call JavaScript and send some I Ajax request to, uh, to, Ra to the Rails application. In the Rails application, there, this is where a portamore comes into play. The drink event is triggered. The drinks widget is looking for drink events, so it's, um, so it's called. The widget updates my drink list. Then the request returns to the browser, and nothing changes. So what I want is... Um, I want to. Uh, I want to. So, no, what what, hap what should happen now is that the graph should update and the counter should update. So, uh, in the next step, I'm going to implement the counter widget. This is the, the, the showing the blood alcohol concentration in the right corner. And again, I use my uh, fucking terrific generator to to create the widget. This time, I call it counter. It will create the uh, the counter widget class and the the standard uh, view and the standard test. You can do awesome testing in Apotomo. But I won't talk about this today. So going to the oh, it's it's not really it's not everything is not on the screen. So again, we got some widget. It's derived from a Podomo uh, widget. And oops, sorry. And what I do in my in my in my display method is um, I retrieve the current blood alcohol concentration, store this into the BH BAC blood alcohol concentration instance variable, and then I call render in order to render the view. The view is very, very easy. It's just using the widget diff helper again. Did I mention that I hate helpers? Okay. Uh, it's using the widget diff helper again, and then it's uh, rendering the blood alcohol concentration. So it's like a, it's like a standard action view. What happens here is uh, roughly is, is this. So the, the widget diff helper is creating a diff for me, and is already assigning some, some um, DOM ID which is named after the widget. So the standard ID is counter. We need that in order to update this widget. This is why I show you this uh, awesome HTML markup. And uh, in order to render the widget in my, in my dashboard, in my home controller, I need to attach it again to the widget tree, to the root, uh, to, to the root uh, object. So I use widget counter and uh, put it on the root widget. And then, of course, in order to display my widget, I use render widget in my controller. In my index view, call render widget, counter, and it will stub out the counter on the right side, and below that, the drinks list. Two completely separated um, user interface elements, also known as widgets. Now, um, oops. now what happens here is uh, when I click drink, when I click on the drink button, nothing will happen since uh, the, the counter is not updating since it's not looking for drink events. So I use, um, sorry, this is the counter widget. And again, I use response to event in order to tell the counter, hey, you are interested. You are interested in the drink event as well. So I just use response to event, pass in the, the, the event name, name drink. And then I use uh, some strange passing root uh, option. I, I won't talk about this because it's a little bit too, too much for, uh, for an overview about a Portimo. So we got bubbling events in a Portimo. And what I'm saying here is, hey, if you see the drink event in the root widget, then please call your drink, uh, your drink state, your drink um, method. It's just a detail. I don't want to show you non-working code. And in my drink, in my drink um, method in the, in, the, in the counter widget, I do something strange again. I use the replace method, and then I use, uh, and then I call, um, I, I call re replace state display. So what that does basically is um, it's telling the widget to re-render its display state, which is displaying the counter, and then it wraps the entire um, markup into some JavaScript replace statement. So in, into jQuery, because I configured a portal mode to use jQuery. So Apotomo takes care of all the um, escaping and stuff like that. So I just use replace, and Apotomo will um, render the respective state, put it into JavaScript, and send it back to the browser. I could also use prototype here. I could, use, I could write my own JavaScript. I could send back arbitrary text. I don't have to use the replace helper method, but it's very handy, actually. So what happens now is, I render the two widgets in my dashboard. I click on drink, 
I get an AJAX request. The drink event is triggered in the Podomo in Ruby. Then the widget, the drinks widget, will add the drink to my drink list. The counter will re-render, and uh, the request will return to the to the browser, and then the counter will change. It will update. So um, I have interactivity in my front end, which is freaking awesome. And um, the concept behind this is I use um, real MVC. So the widgets we just created, the counter widget and the drinks widget, they are completely separated MVC stacks. And this is MVC like in MVC. So this is real MVC. I have one controller, one model, and one view per user interface element. All right? And it's running, the MVC um, stack is completely in, running in Ruby. And I use jQuery in this example. I could also use Sprout Core or whatever. And I, I use jQuery to report events into my Rails application. So by using, uh, by using AJAX, the AJAX uh, submission, whatever, you know, you, you know that stuff. I'm using jQuery to report events. Then the MVC stack, my widget, will update itself in Ruby using Rails rendering methods or whatever. And then I use jQuery again to update the elements in the page. So Apodomo, a lot of people confuse this. Apodomo is not a, it's not a JavaScript library. It's using JavaScript to update the interface. And it's using JavaScript to intercept events from the interface. But the, the actual work is done in Ruby. I add the drink in Ruby, I render a template in Ruby, I, uh, I, I respond to events in Ruby. So the, um, the, the MVC is put back into Ruby and uh, in, into Rails. And this is what I really love about Apodomo is that I can use Ruby to write my user interface. And I can, I can use JavaScript as much as I want, but I don't have to. You're free to do whatever you want. That's open source, oh yeah. Uh. One question, who is, um, who is sick of partials in his Rails project? You, you're the only one. Because <laughs> um, an interesting fact about Apodomo is, thank you. <laughs> an interesting fact about Apodomo is that um, it's based on a, on a gem called Cells, done by some uh, nice German boy from uh, Freiburg, that's uh, me. And the Cells plugin is, um, is like providing rendering a new rendering layer for Rails is like view components. And um, so maybe you, you should check out my sales plugin. I can, I can show it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Sorry? This, this could be my new, my new uh, pickup. Uh, so if I want to pick up girls, I could say, hey, lady, do you want to check out my sales gem? Or do you want to have a pot of more? <laughs> Let's try it tonight. All right, so uh, sorry, I'm talking stupid shit all the time. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> did, I, did I say anything about Rails and REST and uh, Ruby? And <laughs> so what I, what I did is, um, you remember my drink and track, um, my drink and track uh, application. I used um, I used Apodomo widgets to separate concerns or chunks in my view into widgets, and then I used Apodomo to write my user interface behavior in Ruby and not in uh, JavaScript. The cool thing about um, my Ruby widget is that I can test in Ruby. I can run tests on my user interface in Ruby, and I don't have to I don't have to write um, JavaScript. Um, tests. I don't know. I mean, two years ago, writing JavaScript tests was impossible. Now it's working okay. But um, the cool thing is I can also test my widgets in isolation. So I can test my, my counter widget without having to worry about the entire dashboard. So I can run a test on my, uh, on my, on my counter widget alone, which is a very, very uh, good benefit in, in, in the Apodomo approach. And I already told you, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not bound to the replace method, and I'm not bound to the JavaScript that Apodomo is generating. I can also render my own JavaScript. I can send back JSON or whatever. 
and we have some uh, we have a nice concept in Apodomo uh, which is called bubbling events it's um, similar to the event system found in uh, um, real in real GUI libraries like um, GTK or QT so you have events that bubble up a hierarchy I'm not going into the details here of course you, we, you can nest widgets you can put you can um, you can have uh, widget families, I call it. Like one widget, it has three children, and the three children can have five other widgets inside itself. So you can, you can put up uh, very complex widget trees without losing control about what's happening. And we got some nice caching mechanism as well in Ruby. So all the front end stuff is done in, in Ruby. And uh, the cool thing is you can also put widgets into gems. And you can ship those to other um, applications or other projects. So there are a lot of uh, people using Apodomo. A lot is, uh, okay, some people. <laughs> and they do, they do nice, um, nice uh, plugins. And you can put them in your Rails application without having to worry how they work inside. You just insert the gem, put them in your widget tree, render the widget, and it's there. And they have stuff like, um, for example, there's a cool widget which is providing um, a, a jQuery grid, like a spreadsheet. And it's completely written in Ruby. So I, ca I can configure the widget in Ruby. I can intercept events in Ruby. So for example, if I click in a, in a cell in, a, in, a, in the browser, then there's an event triggered in Apodomo, and I can process this event in Ruby. So this is really an awesome widget. And it's available in a gem, thanks to Paul. Paul, you're famous again. <laughs> and uh, there's another widget, like a, a notes widget or a to-do widget you can put in your uh, application. And so it's very, a very, very handy way to have a reusable components, which we don't have in Rails right now. So you saw my, you saw my drink and track application. I, I, already, um, I already demonstrated this application like seven or eight years ago at a Linux, um, at a Linux conference. Everybody loved the idea. Everybody was participating in the drink and track, like drinking and tracking the drinks. But uh, nobody copied the idea so far. So I'm really planning to write that application. What I need is a, a good designer, because my interface sucks. And I need some JavaScript guru. So if anybody here in the audience is interested in helping me out in writing a stupid application about drinking, I'm happy to have you in my team. So um, yeah, there was a lot about um, a lot about beer. If you're interested in um, Apodomo, there is a web page. It's uh, naturally apodomo.de, because I'm from Germany. <laughs> on the screen, uh, on the screen, on the page, there are screencasts. I started screencasting. It's fun, and it even works with Linux. It's cool. And there are there's a tutorial guiding you through all the uh, concepts we have in Apodomo. And there are there's a mailing list, an IRC channel. You can find all the information on um, apodomo.de, and I'm on Twitter. Who's using Twitter here? Not many? OK, that's good, because Twitter is a waste of time, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, follow me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, I think um, 30 minutes is OK for a talk. If you have questions, I'm on stage, actually. So if you have questions, you can ask now. You don't have questions? Oh, there's one. The database communication? It's the same database that, uh, so the question is, where is my database communication in the widget? The widget is um, actually an abstract controller. It's like, um, it's like a Rails controller. It's, it's slimmer. But it's, it's a controller. And so this way, we can use um, Rails. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> cool. <laughs> was you. <laughs> so we can use Rails um, facilities to access the database. It's just like in a real controller. But it's not a real, it's not a monolithic controller. It's just a small page, uh, a small page element. And you can, use, you can use all the stuff you're using in a controller as, uh, in, a, in a widget, like database, helpers, maybe something like authentication. You can use all the facilities uh, in, in your widget as well. Uh, by the way, the microphone doesn't work, so you can speak without it. Hello? Oh, yeah. Hey, Hello? how are you? Yeah! <laughs> Going out tonight? Yeah! <laughs> Woo! So, you want to see my sales gem? 
Lamer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, should I hold it all the time? Uh, okay, uh, my question was about, uh, so widgets just uh, a, a piece so of Ruby code? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you just try it without microphone? I can, yeah, I can yeah, come out, I can down. Absolutely. So, so um, the the concept of my, of my widgets I did in, in Podomo is not. I don't force you to to use uh, these widgets everywhere. It's it's up to you. What, how much a Podomo you want in your project? And it's really it's just it's just a controller and a little bit of JavaScript. But it's uh, it's arranged very neatly. So you you can you can um, you can wrap. Reusable stuff in your in your uh, application into widgets, but it's up to you what what you're um, what you're wrapping into widgets. But it's it's really not that much. It's just the widget, the bubbling events, and a little bit of JavaScript. You mean a different framework than? Uh, um, the problem is. Uh, yo yo yo! Check check. The problem is um, a Podomo is working in Sinatra. It's no problem. The problem is um, that we use Rails internal rendering in the cells gem. So Apotomo is based on cells. If you want to see cells, I can show it later to you. And um, the cells gem is using Rails rendering. Rails rendering layer sucks. Yeah, I say this in front of a camera. And th this is the problem why Apotomo is still bound to Rails. So if we, get, if we get rid of the Rails rendering layer, or if we have action view, the action view in a separate gem, then you could use cells in Apotomo in Sinatra or in uh, Reni, a new framework which is uh, quite cool, by the way, or in any other framework. So it's it's really just the rendering layer that is um, making trouble. Oh, there are more questions. Yeah, this uh, is cool. Nick. Yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we I don't personally, but in my company, there's people that use cells, your cells. Yeah. Uh, now, the question is, uh, quite, uh, instead of using so many helpers that you mentioned that you hate, um, uh, what would be an idea to start removing in future versions of Apotomo so many helpers like the URL? And so you, so you, you're asking how to get rid of too many helpers? Yeah. So how, how would I, you do I, that? I did, a, I did a blog post about that like two weeks ago. It's called Helpers Are Shit. And uh, the, I have a couple of I have a couple of um, solutions. Like uh, one is using the um, the Drapper gem. It's a it's a new gem. It's uh, it, it's um, like putting the helper methods into your models. This is one solution. But the problem I see with helpers. So I don't have a problem with helpers like um, using a helper to round a value or using a helper to escape JavaScript. That's not a problem. This is okay. The problem is that helpers are the implementation in Rails is absolutely shitty. So what they do is they mix in some magic module into the view, and the view can use these helpers. And then sometimes helpers go back to the controller because they need something like routing information. And this is my problem about, about helpers. So I don't have a problem using uh, sanitize or whatever in, in the view. This is absolutely OK. The problem is they don't have a, a, a receiver. So you use a global method in a view, which sucks since we are in an object-oriented uh, Environment. Oh my God, I'm, I'm getting started. <laughs> uh, so the the one problem is we don't have a receiver. So I like having an object which I can use to call the helper. And the other problem is that um, the Rails implementation is shitty. Okay. So um, and in cells we have some different approach. We we still use we can still use helpers from Rails, but we have uh, a different implementation available. So you can so you can switch to um, the the helper method method is actually called on your cell instance. So there is really a receiver, and there is you don't have to mix methods into the view. You just define a method in your cell, and it's available as a helper method. And this is how helpers should be done. This is the way Sinatra does it. So yeah, thanks for the question. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with helpers. I, I just help, hate the implementation. Yes, please. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, the first question is uh, how many uh, difficult widgets uh, was already implemented or uh, it's just like a mechanism uh, and uh, do you measure performance uh, using this uh, game and without this game? So the qu first question was um, how many widgets are already available in a portable? Yeah. This is why I had a the first, uh, the first phrase in my slide was a portal was a generic widget framework. So it just brings you the concept of widgets. And, um, oh, I think my timer is, yeah, done. Yeah, there is a drinking widget, so what else do you want? <laughs> like, <laughs> a counter showing your blood alcohol concentration, how cool is that? <laughs> No, I think um, there are lots of people using Apodomo and they don't tell me about it because I, I don't have a public repository yet. But a lot of people are asking me about setting up some public repository so you can share widgets between projects. And this is a really, li like the, uh, the, the data grid, like the spreadsheet widget, it's awesome, really. You can do so many things. But I guess, I don't know how many companies are using Apodomo. At, at least, I know about at least 30 or 40 companies who, who use it and I think they all right, nice widgets, but the most widgets are meant for private use, so I'm not sure about any numbers. Uh, the second question was performance, right? Yeah. So of course there's a drawback. I mean, you have a Rails application, you have your front end written in a Podomo, and you have JavaScript. So it's, it's uh, three different um, steps in order to, to make a user interface. Of course, it's faster if you have a Sprout Core or Backbone.js front end, and you just do REST calls to your bank end. I don't, I don't have a problem with it, but it's, it involves that you do a lot of JavaScript. And um, Apodomo is, makes your user interface slower, of course, because you're using, you have to go, you, have to, you need more round trips to the server and back, but I don't, I, did, I never measured something like a, I mean, you can't compare it, it's like, uh, of course, JavaScript in the front end is faster, and of course you need less um, trips to the server in order to get data, uh, but, yeah, I think it's, you, cannot, you cannot really compare it. Like, um, like uh, I can't say Apodomo is uh, two times slower than Sprout Core. Sorry. It was a weak answer. <laughs> okay, oh, there's one question. Two. Uh, I also use your cell, uh, yes, cell plugin. Uh, yes, it's a good plugin. Uh, so, as I see, Apodomo is like cells, but with one big feature. You can update these cells by events. Absolutely. Uh, yes, so more question. Can I change ID, as I see by your generator? You generate counter widget, and it uh, give us uh, div with ID counter. Can I change uh, div, uh, div element with ID counter? Can I change with, uh, with I, this ID? Uh, because maybe this general idea used in an hour place. Of course, uh, I mean, I just showed the standard example. Of course, you can change the ID of the widget. You can change. You don't have to use the widget div helper. You can also write your own div. It's just there for convenience. So it, it just works out of the box. So if you start a problem, it's, it's, it's it works. Uh, so replace also found this ID and write write uh, JS which replace. If you change the ID. Then you, have, you also have to tell, to tell replace that ah. there is another ID. So no uh, replace don't know about this ID, yes? No, it's only know about default ID. Sorry? Uh, cell, as I understand, replace. Stop uh, laughing. Uh, replace only know default ID. If I change ID in view, widget view, so I also uh, should uh, give this ID to replace command, yes? Um, actually, I told you bullshit. <laughs> Uh, okay. If you, if you, <laughs> if you change, you, usually you change the ID when you create the widget in the widget tree. Like in the, in the has widgets method, you can you create your widgets yes. in the controller. And if you change the ID, then things will work out of the box again. Ah, okay. So Sorry, I, I, but you, you can change everything. Like you can tell replace not to use the ID XYZ, but ABC. You can change everything, but things work out of the box like uh, there's a, like a convention. By the way, uh, Ryan Bates, the famous Ryan Bates, was ah. the one who proposed this uh, convention, like having an automatic ID. Uh, the question is, uh, how do I order the uh, e event handlers? 
So, it, uh, example you mentioned, there are two widgets, uh, counter and the drinks. And um, it's ob obviously that uh, the counter vid widget should be invoked after the drinks widget. Because if it's invoked before, n n nothing happens. Because uh, uh, user uh, don't, uh, drink is not added to the current user. So, there should be uh, a way to manage the order of event handling. It's, uh, this is a very good point. So the, the, the question is, uh, I think you heard the question, is about how do, how do I uh, manage uh, the, the order of order of event, event, event handling. Mm. And the point is, it's very, it's very, very, very simple, again. Uh, since the drinks widget is triggering the event, it's the first widget who sees the event. So it's the first widget who can process the, the event. And then the event bubbles up into the root widget. So we have bubbling events. And by using the bubbling feature, you can, you can um, manage the order of, uh, of processing. So for example, if I, um, if I add a widget, if I observe the event in the root widget, then I will be informed later about the event than if I observe the event in the drinks widget, since the event is triggered in the drinks widget, and then it bubbles up to root. So it, in a two-level hierarchy, this doesn't make any sense. Well, it, it makes sense since you can still manage the order, but in the, if you have complex trees, then you can really use the bubbling nature of events in a to to set up um, different orders. So it's Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience. See you tonight.